All right, talking about the DJI Pilot app's main menu today. Believe it or not, there's quite a lot to talk about and some vital features that are a part of this main menu. So we'll jump right into it. First off, you can see this is what the startup screen, main menu, or whatever you want to call it, is looks like Android on the left, iOS on the right. As you can see, the additional feature you can see right away on the Android side is mission flight. So it'd be automated mapping flights, waypoint flights. Fortunately, that's not part of the iOS app. iOS is only for the Mavic 2 Enterprise as well. If you're on iOS, if you have an iPad, you could use DJI Ground Station Pro for mission flight. Or if you're on an iPhone, you can get a drone deploy or Pix4D Mapper could be some good third-party mapping options in that regard. Uh, but more or less, this is the startup screen you'll see. Uh, left side Android, right side iOS. So in the bottom left of this startup screen, you're gonna see a message and then a small circle. So right now you can see the circle is red and that shows that the mobile device that the DJI Pilot app is on is not connected to the remote controller. Potential reason for this, uh, the device could not be connected to the RC, right? If you just pulled your phone out of your pocket and opened up the Pilot app, uh, this is what you'd see. Bad cord, DJI Pilot app's not set as the default app on the Crystal Sky. Uh, if you, you know, remember when you're plugging in, it's like, do you wanna always use this app for the USB device? So if you have something else set up as a default app, you might wanna go into app settings and make sure you got that right. And that's just if you're connected to the RC and you're not seeing a green um, message here that we'll cover in the next slide. Also one thing to note, this is only possible with devices that are not built into the remote controller. So if you have a smart controller, moving to the next slide here, you're always gonna see remote controller connected as the device is built in. Um, no drone name is displayed. So you might think that you're good to go when you see this message, uh, but actually the remote controller is not connected to the drone at this point. Uh, you're gonna need to link the RC and the drone uh, however, that is for the specific enterprise aircraft you're seeing, uh, put, put the RC into binding mode, put the drone into binding mode, and go ahead and link them together. And once you do that, you'll reach kind of step three here. You've got the green dot, the remote controller is connected to the mobile device, and then you also have the drone name there showing it's connected. You also see any payloads uh, that are connected to the drone. So in this case, it's a Mavic 2 Enterprise. So the dual uh, is, is the technical payload on the drone, even though you can't really swap that in and out. Looks a little bit different if you're connected to the Matrice 300 RTK. On the right side, you do have the health management system, which is new with that drone. You can also see the payloads that are connected beneath the drone. So if you power onto the drone and you have a couple payloads on there, and you're not seeing them, I'm going to want to power it off and double check the connection there between the payloads and the drones and potentially firmware on the, the payloads as well would be another quick troubleshooting step uh, to note there. First things first, when you do turn on uh, your app, you're connected to the drone and you're also connected to the internet, it's going to go ahead and check the versions and let you know if there's any updates. It does this update check either way but it's only going to work if you are connected to the internet in regards to any new updates. Important to read the release notes too for these versions. Uh, some of the pilot app uh, releases might not necessarily be for your drone, so good to read those through before you go ahead and complete any updates. But just showing you how this is gonna happen here when we go to our next screen. Uh, if there's a new firmware, so there's new firmware is available, what to do, some new features, go ahead and click on the details. Uh, pretty much anytime you see that blue, that's something, a link you can click on in the Pilot app. Just go ahead and start upgrading. You can see the notes there. I would also just be as close to your router internet source as possible. Want a good internet connection, want it downloads and upgrades. So it'll go ahead and download and complete it. So the next time we turn the app on, they'll say all firmware versions are good to go and you can continue on. Moving on to the app menu in the top right, call it a hamburger menu or just menu. Click on those three bars and see some of the options there. First one being offline map. So if we go ahead and click on that, it'll take us into this offline map a download menu. In the top right, you can view the current maps that you have downloaded. You can tap and drag the rectangle to your desired area on the map and then clicking the blue button 
uh, would it go ahead and initiate the download. This would be useful if you're going to a location, you're not gonna have internet there. It's only available for the standard map, not the satellite map, but oftentimes, hey, it's better to have a map than no map uh, in these types of situations. Next up on that menu would be flight records. So you can go ahead and click on that. In the top left, uh, you can see a sync button. So if you wanted to sync your flight records to the cloud to save them, that's optional. Uh, you can go ahead and do that. That is manual there. Uh, that's not uh, automatic flight record sync. You have to go ahead and do that when you want to sync your flight records to the cloud. On the right side there, you can see some recent flights, the day, how far it was flown, how long, so 15 minutes in this case, maximum altitude was 102 feet, all that good information. If we go ahead and click on one of those logs here, oh, I'm sorry, we'll click on the uh, fresh button first, and you can sync one month, six months, all flight records, and you can also clear cache records because you know eventually your cache could become quite full and, and slow down the app and, and device in that regard. But now clicking on one of those flight logs here, uh, some of the options, uh, that's center map, display RC inputs, pause and play, and then playback speed, I believe it goes up to eight times there. And then on the top, you have the information, what mode the drone was in, how many satellites, the battery life, all that good stuff. I'll show a quick video here, get an idea of what we're looking like. You can see any notifications that occurred during the flight as well, the GPS location, uh, the duration of when it was going on. You can see I kind of dragged the blue slider there to fast forward. Those little buttons under the slider are a bit finicky. Um, so you can see I keep kind of going in full screen mode trying to, trying to press them. But zooming in on the drone there, you can see that right stick. I have the controller up. I'm pushing forward so the drone's pitching forward and moving forward. It also shows the percentage. You know, so I took the right control stick down, so it's obviously not moving anymore. You know, control input right now. I went ahead and paused the flight there, increased the flight speed right, at eight times now, recentered. Zooms out a little, a little far in the center button, but does bring you to the location. So just manually going ahead and zooming back in here. And you can see as the drone's moving, I can drag the blue line there and you can zoom in pretty far as well so we can see with practice seeing some circles some figure eights in this area right around the home point so a lot of good information to review after the fact and it's nice to have this information whether you want to assess a flight after the fact or if you needed to prove where and when you were, were flying as well a good info to have Next up, GeoZone unlocking. So this, we're not talking exactly what GeoZone unlocking is. I just realized in the, the pilot app, what you're doing is importing your unlocking certificate and activating it. The first step of applying for the custom unlock or QEP program for public safety entities in North America and Europe is going to take place outside of the pilot app. And then just a reminder, that geofencing on the DJI side is not legal permission to fly. You'd include legal permission with your application to get a custom unlock for the DJI geofencing. And then the steps you need to take in the pilot app in order to fly, you could see the red on this side if you're trying to fly in that restricted zone, we would need to import and activate the unlocking certificate. So once again, click on GeoZone unlocking. And then when you load that up, there'll be a little refresh circle on the top right. Make sure you're connected to the internet to download it and make sure you're logged into the DJI account that the unlock certificate was generated for. If you're not flying in an area where you need an unlocking certificate, obviously you don't need to go through the step, just showing you how, so you are aware. But after you go ahead and refresh the app, it'll say new unlocking package is available. Go ahead and click on that and then import all. So this is importing the unlocking certificate to the drone. So you do only need to do this uh, the one time. Then after you've imported it, you can go ahead and turn it on, agree, click OK, and then you can see it is now green, which means the unlocking certificate is enabled. Another thing to note here is if it's just a small circle unlocking certificate for a specific location, it's going to restrict the drone to flying inside just that circle. So if you go to a new location, you're going to want to turn the unlocking certificate off 
Otherwise, the drone's not gonna take off if you still have the unlocking certificate turned on. It's basically just saying, drone, good to fly in this area, up to altitude. You can click on uh, the unlock itself for more information on where it is and et cetera. Next on the menu here, Enterprise Shield, you can complete status check and status check service activation. And then on the settings side here, uh, you have local data mode. This is basically just turning airplane mode on for the app, so it's not gonna connect to the internet, which could be useful if you want to sync your flight logs to the cloud, or if you want to get update notifications. If you're in local data mode, you're not gonna get those notifications. You can enable map request for Mapbox. So in that case, you'd still be able to see your map, uh, just the Mapbox server would be connecting to the internet there with that map request and the DJI Pilot app would not be. So with those um, who might have security concerns, uh, the local data mode is an option to pretty much just disconnect the DJI Pilot app uh, from the internet. Security code is available on the Mavic 2 Enterprise. Basically you can set a security code on your drone's internal storage, not the SD card, but the internal storage. That security password is also gonna come up when you go to fly the drone, but you can technically reset the password and then start flying the drone anyway. But if you reset the password, it formats the internal storage and deletes any videos or images on there. So just a feature that to be aware of, but you go ahead and click on it, put in the security password, confirm it and say, okay. And click on privacy poly if you like to read that information, clear cache if that's getting full, if you're having some issues maybe uh, with mapping and getting some errors, that's been a troubleshooting step before. Uh, contact us, uh, basically if you have any comments, concerns, uh, support at dji.com. And then finally, about pilot has a couple items. For one, you can click on check updates if you're connected to the internet, it's gonna say, uh, if you have any new versions, otherwise, if there is no new versions or you're not connected to the internet, they'll just say you've upgraded to the latest version. And then you can also click on update logs to see what the new app versions have brought, basically the release notes for the various pilot app versions. And then finally, if you wanna sign out of your pilot account and sign into a different account in the settings, the bottom you click on sign out and that's where you do that. Circling back to the main screen here, the tutorials on the top here is a new feature with Pilot 1.9. You can see product tutorials, flight tips, industry applications, user manuals, so a lot of good information there. And then on the bottom, uh, you can click on gallery to see any photos or videos on the drone's internal storage or SD card in, this, in the uh, drone itself. And on the right, that would be if you're connecting to DJI Flight Hub. Next up, we'll be getting into the manual flight option, uh, but that's what you see here for the Android version. Button on the left for manual flight, as you can see, got Terry potentially there, inspecting and structure, flying the drone manually. Mission flight, you can see that typical mission flight pattern as the drones would take pictures in a mapping type mission. So those are the two flight options you would select from the main menu. Most of the time, you're just gonna open up the app and click on manual flight assuming doing something in the manual flight realm, but it's good to know all the features that are part of the main menu here. So next time we'll get into those settings on the manual flight side, uh, but that's it for this tutorial.